Hello friends, Chris here. This video is kind of a part of lesson 25 where I teach about computers for audio production. But as I was doing my lesson plan for that video, I realized that one of the most important factors of choosing a computer for your audio production is making the choice between Mac or PC. And I found that this topic was actually taking up most of that video. So I just decided to do a separate video to talk about some of the pros and cons of each platform. Now, when I say PC, what I mean is a computer that uses the Windows operating system. Now, overall, um, spoiler alert here, I, I actually don't think one is better than the other. I think in the end it's a tie, but there are differences between the two and some of those differences might work better or worse for you. Because a computer can be a fairly expensive investment and you generally only buy one. So you wanna make sure you buy the right one for your long-term goals. So here's the main difference that I would say between the two. I think it's safe to say the Macs are more expensive for similar specs, for similar performance. However, Mac software is less expensive and just as powerful, if not better. Um, so in the end, it's roughly the same cost and roughly the same level of performance because you could buy a PC for cheaper, but you end up spending more on software to get the same level of capabilities. So I'm mostly specifically talking about Logic Pro for audio production, but this applies to Final Cut Pro for video production as well. See, in my opinion, for music production, Logic Pro is the best choice of software. And um, now again, this is, it's just my opinion. And maybe it's because I use Logic Pro that I like it. But Logic Pro is very diverse. It has a lot of features. It doesn't score a 10 out of 10 on all of the features. There are other recording programs that might score a 10 out of 10 in very specific areas. However, Logic is all encompassing. It has a fantastic library of samples and loops, some excellent software instruments. It's got a very intuitive drummer instruments for creating drum beats. There's a live looping function. It's just got so much functionality that any other DAW doesn't have everything. They just, they do a few things really well. And then there's a few things that they either don't do well or don't do at all. And other DAWs are generally more expensive as well. And that's why I'm treating this software as a huge bonus towards the Apple platform. Because, I mean, Logic costs like 200 bucks US. Pro Tools is, it's like a thousand dollars per year. It's subscription based and that's very expensive. And Pro Tools, as far as I know, Pro Tools doesn't do anything that Logic can't do. So I bought Logic 10 when it first came out. That was like 10 years ago. Um, so yeah, I paid like 300 bucks or whatever for it. Had I gone with the Pro Tools route instead, I mean, then by now I would have invested like around $10,000 into just the recording software. So $10,000 as opposed to $300, that's a pretty significant difference. And I do think that those cost savings are worth considering as far as choosing a platform. So in my opinion, it's not the Mac computer itself, but the value of the computer and the software together as a package that make the Macintosh ecosystem perhaps a little bit more efficient or perhaps better value. Now, if you're gonna use a Mac computer and use third-party software such as Pro Tools or Cubase or F FL Studio, um, well, then your value goes down. And if you're gonna use software that's available for PC, you'd probably be better off using a PC. Cause like I said, the advantage of Mac isn't the computer, it's the software. So if you're gonna go with a Mac, I would also suggest pairing it with Apple's software, Logic Pro. Now here's where things get a little bit more complicated though. And even if you get a Mac and pair it with the Apple software, it still might not be as good a value as a PC. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. You see, a year or two ago, I certainly would have recommended Mac, hands down. However, in the last couple years, Apple introduced their own chipset. They make it themselves and it requires different programming language than the traditional Intel chipsets that they used to use. This new chipset that they're using is called the M1. They're supposed to be releasing an M2 this year. So it's basically an M series chipset. And because it uses a new programming language, all of the previous Apple software is no longer compatible on its own with the new system, but it can still work. You need to get a translating program. So Apple also released a translating program called Rosetta so that you can still use the older Apple software or older programs that work on a Mac. They'll still work on the new Macs through this translation software. But the translation software isn't without hiccups. Some programs work well through it, some programs don't. And it also adds an additional step of computer resources being used in order to translate the software in real time as things are happening. So this translation software basically bogs down the system a little bit. 
but not all programs need to use this translation software. So basically, I'll put it into three different categories. You've got your, your programs that are M1 native. That means they're programmed to work properly and efficiently without the translation layer in the new Macintosh computers. And then there's the other category of programs that simply don't work, um, not even through the translation layer. They are just incompatible. And there's not very many that fall into that category. Most programs do still work, but they'll be in the middle somewhere. It's They don't work flawlessly, but a lot of the programs... Yeah, they're not working perfectly either. Take, for instance, UAD. I, I use the UAD ecosystem for plugins. I've got the UAD satellite and I use, and I, I love their plugins. They sound fantastic. Now on the UAD website, it states that their software is M1 compatible. So it should work flawlessly. And I was expecting it to work flawlessly. But then in my experience, when I started using it, it did not work flawlessly. I was having major problems of my CPU being bogged down. I couldn't even run basic projects because of my UAD plugins that were instantiated. This should not be a problem. I mean, the whole purpose of the UAD platform is that the processing happens on the card, not the computer. It's supposed to take pressure off of your computer system, but from my experience, it's putting more pressure on the system. I also noticed a lot of third-party plugins. Some claimed to be M1 native, some didn't, but a lot of plugins were simply bogging down this computer. And I got this brand new $5,000 computer. It should work well. I should be able to run all my former projects on it without any hiccups, but I was not able to do that. And so what I did as a workaround, I mean, and this was just so that I could open my projects that I was previously working on on my old computer, but that old computer, it was a 2015 MacBook Pro, and it was running my logic sessions better than this brand new 2021 MacBook Pro. Like, it's pretty decked out. It's supposed to be a really high-end computer, and it was really frustrating that I couldn't run my logic sessions with it even, and my old computer could. So um, my workaround that I figured out was that I could open logic through Rosetta, which basically means I'm opening the old version of logic, which is programmed in the old language, and translating that language into the M1. And then everything was running a lot smoother. I'm able to run all my UAD plugins, all my third-party plugins, and the sessions are working. Now within Logic, there's a little display where you can see your CPU usage. My CPU usage is still high, like it's hitting around 50% quite often, which is still higher than I was getting on my old computer. It's ridiculous. However, I'm happy that it's at least working now. So there's definitely some hiccups that need to be worked out with this new M1 system. And that's why I said like, you know what, a year ago, I would have said hands down, Macs are better for audio production. However, now with this new M1 architecture and third party manufacturers aren't keeping up, a lot of them don't have the software that runs smooth on the M1 system. So now I'm gonna say, if you're investing in a new Mac, I mean like the Apple software, it works great. If you just stay within the Apple ecosystem and, and use Logic, use all their samples and instruments and everything that Logic comes with, it will work fantastic and it will get crazy good performance. And when I say crazy good performance, I mean like like hundreds of times better than what I need. I run projects that have uh, 50 tracks is pretty common. Sometimes I'll get a project with like 100 tracks. Some Very rarely do I get more than 100 tracks. Um, but if I stay within the Logic ecosystem, like I could get probably one or 2,000 tracks. Like it's it's ridiculous, way more than I would ever need. Um, however, as soon as I start implementing third-party software that wasn't made by Apple, even if it claims to be M1 native, it just isn't working that great. It's bogging the system down tremendously. So in my opinion, Apple lost its edge on performance. See, it used to be that Apple computers, well, they were more expensive, but they also performed better. Now they're just more expensive. But like I said, they make up for it with the software. So I'm still happy with my decision to stick with Apple. I think if I were to switch over to PC, I would get frustrated with spending so much money on software and still not having the same level of functionality as I get with Logic. I also think PC computers are a little bit more future-proof. Um, because they're upgradable over time. You see, an Apple computer, with the exception of the Mac Pro, which is their desktop model, which is crazy expensive and already obsolete because it uses the old Intel chipsets, all of their other computers are not upgradable. You can't change the RAM, you can't change the hard drive, and of course you can't change the processor. So however you buy it, that's the configuration it will be in forever. I see this as a drawback to the Mac system. You see, with a PC, you can, let's say you have $2,000 budget for a, for a computer. With a PC, you can 
spend your entire budget on a PC that has a great motherboard, a great processor, and maybe skimp a little bit on the RAM and on the hard drive with the intention of upgrading that at a later date when you have more money. Whereas with Mac, whatever your budget is, that's the limitation of how good of a computer you can get. There's no upgrading it in the future. I also feel like PC computers are able to run older software a lot more effectively. You see with the Mac system, you put old software on it and it basically just says, oh, this software is incompatible with this operating system. You have to update the software. And it's, you always have to update everything. You have to update the software. And the next thing you know, um, you're browsing the internet or something and it says, oh, your operating system is out of date. So you need to upgrade your operating system. And then you upgrade your operating system and then half your software is out of the date. And then there's this never ending cycle of something's always out of date and they keep forcing you to upgrade. Otherwise, other things don't work. I own a few older Apple computers and they work fantastic. And that's actually another strategy you can do for setting up a home studio is buy an old Apple computer. Like if you're going to, if you want to get something really cheap that works, look for a, an old Mac computer between the years of like 2006 to 2011 or 2010 or something like that. In that year range, those computers are fantastic. They're basically obsolete as far as the software goes. Like they can't function with any modern software and modern software is like all over the internet, like Netflix, Apple TV, Amazon, Google, like you, you can't use these websites with these old computers because these old computers have an older operating system, which has an older internet browser and it just nothing works. But what does work on these computers still is recording programs. So you could put like Reaper or Cakewalk or an older version of Logic, and it will run fantastic. You can run huge, complex, multi-track recording sessions on these older computers. You just can't browse the internet. Another thing that these older computers are great for is put the Linux operating system on it. I did that with my 2006 Mac Pro, and it runs Linux excellent. I can do everything on that computer with Linux, which includes like email and internet browsing, watching movies, even like movie streaming platforms like Netflix, like it just works for everything. So I feel like Apple is intentionally programming obsolescence into their operating systems because these older computers work just fine if you don't use the Apple operating system. So there's nothing wrong with the hardware. It's the Apple programming that's making them obsolete. And Windows does this as well, but I don't think Windows does this to the same extent as what Apple does. So in conclusion, what do I recommend? Well, as much as I'm frustrated with the Apple system, it still is what I recommend. Because you can get a, like a, a MacBook Air, for instance, for like a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars, throw in a few hundred bucks for Logic Pro. So let's just say fifteen hundred for the computer, another three hundred for Logic. So you're at eighteen hundred bucks for a very powerful computer for audio production. You shouldn't have any issues with that system for audio production at any level. But I only recommend the Mac ecosystem if you're going to use Logic as your DAW. If you want to use any other program as your DAW, you're probably better off going with a PC because in the PC platform, you can get a computer that's plenty powerful to run your audio sessions at a lower cost. This whole Mac versus PC thing is an endless debate and I really don't feel like there's a solid right or wrong answer. I can only share with you my own personal experience. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please hit the like button. Now this video is part of a larger series of videos. I'm putting up an entire audio engineering course and it's structured from the beginning basics to intermediate and advanced levels. So if that's something you're interested in, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.